Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision 3D, and we're looking at adding cameras. And we have actually two videos for you, and it's probably one of the most important series in this chapter. And it's so important that I've actually created a little bit more material that's not in the book, and this will be in the downloads for the chapter one uh, code and uh, notes, and it's a Word document on cameras. And we actually have the notes on the two videos here, and uh, we're basically going to give you a bunch of resources. We're going to show you some code. We're going to write some programs. Uh, we're going to look at paper vision. Hey, what's going on there? We're going to show you talk about Flash 10 and how to create a camera in Flash 10. And we're going to write some more code. And uh, it's a very exciting series for me. And uh, if you're confused about how paper vision's camera works, you won't be after this video series. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as we move into this area of cameras and Flash 3D, we've actually got to rethink the whole camera issue. So let's go and take a look at what we think cameras really are. I'm going to draw a few objects on the stage here, and they're 2D, but just imagine that they're 3D here. Here's a square, and here's a circle, and here's another square. They could be cubes, and they could be columns, and whatever you want them to be. And we typically think of a camera like this. We've got some eyeball, in a sense. And all of us have watched the movie trailers at the end of our uh, DVDs, so we know how movies are made, right? Basically, you may have a bunch of objects and scenes, and your camera moves around those objects and scenes, viewing different parts of them, okay? And you can imagine it's moving around on a stage, for example, looking at different areas, right? And that's how our camera works. It moves around in 3D. But that's not the case when it comes to Flash 3D. Uh, Flash 3D runs on something called Painter's Algorithm. And Painter's Algorithm basically compresses all the images into one single flat CRT screen. So it'll take this right here and it will compress it. And you'll just see the front part of it and the front part of it here. And then you may see basically the front part of this curve as well. And so it's impossible in a sense to run a camera through uh, a flat CRT screen. So how do you do it? Well, as opposed to having the camera move through the 3D objects, and since you freeze your camera and have the 3D objects go toward it. Isn't that something? So it's actually the objects that are moving, not the camera. And that's a really difficult concept to kind of ingrain in you as you work with Flash 3D. And so we've got to work with that a little bit and explain what that means. And we're going to start with a number of references. So let's move on. Before we move on, let me give you a few good references that will help you out in this area. And of course, uh, number one on my list is lynda.com. I've actually been a member for years. And Linda offers a number of videos on the web that will help you come up to speed in various areas. There are thousands of tutorials on there. It's relatively inexpensive, about $25 a month. And they actually stay up to speed. So they have a number of videos on the newest technology that's coming out. I really highly recommend Linda and I want to tell you guys you in this area you've just got to train, train, train so continue to expand your skills and make yourself more employable and that's one good resource and actually on their site is the Flash for 2007 bitmap data and 3D image manipulation in Action Script 3 and that was created by a guy named Paul Archman and uh, it's a funny series. He's a very entertaining guy, fun to listen to, and he does a lot of experiments in 3D. And he actually has a site. It's called reflections.com, and you can go there. Here's a reference, and look at a lot of his experiments. Now, the only thing is some of the experiments are kind of dated, and, and if you click on it and you look at the code, you're going to go, well, that's kind of old. You want to stick with Action Script 3. Don't go back to Action Script 2. But we'll show all that to you here, but it's certainly worth looking at. Let's take a look at one of Paul's examples right now. He does this very interesting example of a uh, base kind of a hallway or doorways of numbers. And you, as you scroll you the scroll bar, you essentially go through these numbers. So you get the feeling that your camera is kind of moving down a hallway. But in actuality, it's not your camera that is moving. It's the objects that are moving towards you. And that's how the effect of the camera is obtained in Flash 3D. You actually move all the objects on the stage. And we're going to do a lot more of this and actually show you how to write this code. Now, of course, the next question is, how is this done programmatically? Let's go back to the notes. If you go to Chapter 1, you're going to find this little code snippet that I actually put in there. And I said, here's a camera code snippet. 
But I didn't do a whole lot more after that. But you'll find a number of areas in the book like this are kind of open-ended. Because I knew I was going to come back and do a video series and I'd be able to expand upon it. There just wasn't enough room in the book. And I expand upon how to use or put a camera into uh, 3D space. And actually very simple. You do it in the scaling equation. So right here in your scale equation, and we've already talked about perspective scaling. Remember it's focal length by, by focal length plus Z. But if you put another Z parameter in there, you can actually change your scale. And, and what it does, it causes your object to move toward you and move away. So I'm actually putting a camera in there. I notice I have a negative sign because actually the camera is not moving, the objects are. So it essentially just causes the, cam the objects to move toward you and the idea that the camera is moving away. So it's kind of a little bit reverse logic here. But if you think about it, it'll make sense to you. So the, really the only change I need to make, and this is amazing to get a camera into my system, is just put another parameter in that scale equation of focal length divided by focal length plus z plus another parameter, which is my camera parameter. Hey, let's write some code and show you how it works. So I'm in the 18 lines of code the animation engine I had created earlier, and I've changed the scale equation just a little bit. I've added in a my slider dot value, and what that's going to give me the ability to do is change my camera position based upon a slider. Let's run it and see how it works. So here's my spinning uh, ball. I was going to oscillate in and out of the screen. But now if I slide my camera, you can see I'm actually changing the position of that ball. Isn't that interesting? Changing where it's sliding. So in a sense, I've got a camera. And it seems as if I'm moving the camera in and out of the screen. But actually what I'm doing, once again, is moving the object toward me or away from me. This is real interesting about this particular program. You'll notice there's an inversion. In one way, when you move it, actually the camera the ball seems to move away from you. But if you wait for the inversion to occur, then, you, then just the opposite happens when you move back. It actually moves closer to you. Let's watch that real quick. Here it's moving away. Let it pass the inversion. Now here it's moving closer. So it kind of inverts and it, and, and it gets the camera kind of messed up. And this actually happens in paper vision if you're not careful with your parameters. The problem here is that I'm actually sliding between I think a thousand and a minus thousand, but my focal length is 300. So I'm actually getting an inversion there when I pass that focal length. So just be aware that it happens, but you can see the camera action here as I move this back and forth. I actually am in a sense moving the ball back and forth. Or what I want to really think about is I'm moving my camera in and out of the scene. Okay, and I think we've already talked about how the code was created here, but let's discuss how you create this slider, because this is a new thing for some of you guys. If you're new to Flash, how do you make a slider? Let's take a look at that right now. So I'm looking at the application interface here. There's not much to it. I have a camera name and a slider. I can actually highlight that. Let's just go through the steps on how you actually add a slider to your Flash system. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and delete this. And what you want to go to is Windows and go to components and you get a whole components list that pops up and you can use any of these components in your flash uh, system and I want a slider so I come along here and I just look for slider and I just drag the slider on the stage and you'll know the orientation is going to be wrong I want it to be actually uh, not horizontal but vertical so what I want to go to is windows and properties I'm gonna start working with this a little bit and this is gonna be my best friend right here make sure that's clicked on and right here is a little components tab I want to click on that components tab and when I do, should come up a whole list of things that I can change about my slider, and there is. I want my slider to be vertical, so I choose vertical. I want uh, live dragging, so I can get that in my system. I actually want uh, the maximum value, I think we'll make it a thousand, and the minimum value will be minus a thousand. And all the other values are good. Notice I have a value, and basically it's going to start off at zero. And whatever I call this instance name, then I want basically uh, to go dot value, and that will give me whatever the value of the scroller is with live dragging. Let's go and give this an instance name. I think I'm going to call it my slider. And now you've got it programmed. And you just need to go back and take a look at the code to make sure everything's right there. So we'll bring up actions. And I need to click on the screen. There we go. And we'll take a look at this real quick. There it is, my slider dot value. And now whenever I change my slider value, it all gets plugged into the scale equation, which basically influences where my camera is on the stage. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Let's move on to the next topic.